when they announced who was headlining Glastonbury, someone called Scissor. I have no idea who or what a Scissor is. Then I found out it's not even spelt Scissor. It's spelt S-Z-A. And I was like, what is this? What is this madness? Who is Scissor? In Britain, an ancient kingdom with legends of violence, cruelty, and torment in its blood. Join your hosts, Ross, John, and James, as they bravely tread where few would dare. Witness their journey into the horrific history of British horror. They are... The General Witchfinders. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, goblins and ghouls, welcome back to the part one of the 44th episode of the General Witchfinders podcast. We're almost at your age, John. <laughs> yeah, we're catching up with our ages, aren't we? <laughs> As always, I'm James in Bournemouth in Southern England. I'm, I'm, oh, I just bit my cheek. I'm John Pountney. <laughs> I'm in South Wales, which is still in the South of Wales. And I'm Ross in Dorchester in Southern England. And this time we encountered the dummy. <sighs> A lot of people would fly <laughs> all over the world. <laughs> they love you. Hate me. I frighten them. It's the same thing. Fans. <sighs> well, you, you've got a lot of them, Clive. A huge, loyal follow. <laughs> and you've had it ever since the first dummy picture. A big international public... From Iceland to Borneo to Japan. Yeah, they can all understand grunts. Well, let's put it this way. You get across to them. Yeah. Yes, I do. I mean, would, would, you, would you rather have been like Peter Wager? He's got presses all right. Just watch him use it. Flashing the big charm eyes. Jaw, shoulders, he grace any stage, <laughs> poncing about on his old ego trip till he's as old and crazy as Sir Ramsay out there. They think they're magic just because they can learn the lines in Hamlet. Is that what you wanted? <sighs> well, that's them. That's all they are. But you're something different, Clive. I don't think you've ever known yourself. I've tried. You work in another dimension altogether. What do you mean? We never thought about it. We just let it happen. We've never talked about it, but we felt it. So did all those other people all over the world. Yes, yes, they must have. You don't need lines written down by other men, other people's thoughts to repeat. That's not the way it works. It happens somewhere deep down, like going down into the sea where words don't function anymore. The rules are different. Pressure, receptivity, awareness. And on that level, you reach us. Okay, so... We <laughs> I'm not, there's nothing to say, is there? Really? No, no. <laughs> We continue where we left off in episode 27 with our exploration of the 1976 <laughs> British anthology series Beasts, all written by the legendary Nigel Neal, who now, Ross says, has his own dedicated page on our website. Tonight, we watched the first of two episodes, um, and this one is The Dummy, um, directed by Don Lever, not Cleaver, uh, a veteran of many shows from our youth, such as Lovejoy, A Touch of Frost, and 13 episodes of a uh, sitcom, A Fine Romance. Lever. A fine, fine romance, romance with, with no, no kids. They probably a fine. <laughs> um, now, that was um, Anton, Anton Rogers, I believe. Um, 
and oh julia mckenzie yeah i think you're right oh was that fresh fields bro that might be oh fine romance i'll look it up now yes yes there's one of those many sitcoms by our youth where i i I couldn't see what was funny about it, and no. <laughs> and it was just lots of people in their living rooms, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, and Lever also boasts credits on two episodes of, the, of Hammer House of Horror, Witching Time, and The Mask of Satan. Uh, and Ross has put any recommendations there, John? Can you remember those two episodes at all, John? Sorry, I was reading about a fine Roman. <laughs> <laughs> it was on between 1981 and 1984, so that yes theme tune has stayed in my head for 40 yes. years um judy dench michael williams Susan judy Penn dench and michael williams yes. Is that one? Yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah 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 um and what was what were the other things you wanted me to hammer house of horrors witching time and the mask of satan or the mark of satan are they any good remind me what happens in those episodes. i don't know that's why i was asking you <laughs> um well, they're not memorable enough for john to remember so I never remember the titles. There's one with um, the sexy woman who married the golfer where that's she's a witch in it, I think. And she might, I think she maybe stabs the man who ended up being in um, uh, Anthony Valentine. He ended up being in Coronation Street, but he's dead now. Uh, that's all I can remember about it, really. Okay. Like, like most of the people involved in this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It says the dummy is penned by Neil himself, as with the rest of the series, and features an impressive cast. Mm. Bernard Horse, Horsefowl as Clyde Boy- Boydell, who graced both stage and screen with his imposing presence. He appeared in classic TV series like the very first episode of The Avengers, that's the British Avengers, not the Ameri- not Marvel Comics Avengers, and a inevitably four Doctor Who serials, The Mind Robber, War yes. Games, The Planet yes. of the Daleks, yes. and The Deadly Assassin. Brilliant he, in that. Great. He lent his talents to two Best Picture Academy Award winners, um, Gandhi he? and Braveheart, apparently. Later <laughs> in life, apparently, it says here, he moved with his wife to the Isle of Skye, where he became a crofter. Idyllic. No way. No, that's, that's an good. amazing... I would love to do... So. What is a crofter? It's someone who looks after sheep in it. Crofts. <laughs> it, I think... Is it not someone who makes, like, thatched roofs or something? Ooh, like, yeah. I would love to do that. That's brilliant. What a lovely thing to end up doing. I'd love to retire yeah. to, to do After crofting. After a successful career on, of, on yeah. stage. With, with a, alumni such as um, Mel Gibson and mm. TV's Tom Baker. Uh, it's, wow. it's a traditional term for a fence or enclosed area of land, usually small mm. and arable. So I think it's sort of... Bill's walls and Farming. stuff, maybe something like yeah, that. Yeah, sounds fantastic. Hey. It sounds, and it also then features Glenn Houston as Sydney Stewart, the younger Welsh. brother of matinee idol Donald Houston. Glenn also is Welsh. inevitably another Doctor Who alumnus, having yeah. featured in The Hand of Fear and The Awakening. Yeah. His career extends yeah. far beyond the TARDIS, with appearances in numerous TV shows and films like um, the Hammers, The Secret of Blood Island. And the Brigand of Kandahar. Amazing. Two of um, Hammer's lesser known entries there, I'd say. <laughs> the fantastically named Thorley Walters. Glenn Sorry? Houston is from about 10 miles away from here. Wow. Uh, a, place, a place called Clidach Vale, which is um, at the top of one of the smaller Rhonda Valleys. I've just looked Ooh. it up. There you are. Amazing. Not far from where it, Stanley Baker's from. It's a fertile ground. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So the fantastically named Thorley Walters as Sir Ramsay, bringing a wealth of genre experience to the table, playing the Burgermeister in Vampire Circus, Dr. Hertz in Frankenstein Created Woman, (laughs) and Inspector Frisch in Frankenstein (laughs) Must Be Destroyed. Notably, he also portrayed the iconic Dr. John H. Watson in four productions, each with a different actor playing Holmes. Sherlock Holmes and the Deadly Nicholas, uh, so, uh, sorry, let me do that again. The Deadly Sher- Nicholas. <laughs> and the, yes, Sherlock Holmes and the Deadly Necklace, starring, of course, Big Chris Lee. The Best House in London, starring Peter Jeffrey. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes' Smarter Brother, starring Douglas Wilmer. And Silver Blaze, starring our favourite drunk, Sherlock Holmes' Christopher Plummer. Listen to episode 37 <laughs> for more details on that one, if you dare. Air. It also features Michael Sheard as the sergeant who gained fame for his portrayal yeah. of the tyrannical school teacher, Mr. Bronson, yes. in Grange Hill. Now, I said, a man who I'm like, I understand. I fully understand. <laughs> yes. After, after 18 Boy! years of teaching, 
Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. And the man's Johnny trying to, do job. to play Hitler and yes. a school teacher in Remembrance of the Daleks. Correct. We're coming on to that now. It says in Grange Hill in the, the mid 1980s, he also developed a niche for playing Hitler, appearing in four films Rogue Mail, The Dirty Dozen, colon, The Next Mission, <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and uncredited role in Hitler of the Andes, and in the TV series The Tomorrow People. She had cited his favourite film. Yeah, apparently so. Yeah, apparently. No way. She, <laughs> she had cited his favourite film appearance as Escape to Athena, where he worked alongside oh. his good friend, Roger Moore, yeah, who later contributed film. the forwards to Sheard's autobiography. What a team up. <laughs> oh, what, what, it's what called? a team up. Can we guess what it's called? Um, Sheard. Uh, sheer delight. <laughs> <laughs> sheer delight. <laughs> Michael Sheard. Um, oh, I was oh gonna it's called. Yes, Mr. Bronson. Memoirs of a oh! bum. <laughs> Memoirs of a bum actor. <laughs> Nonsense. He's been too hard. He's, he's obviously uh, a bit of self-deprecation there. F- uh, fantastic. Uh, because, as present. Ross's script says here, of course there is Star Wars, which James will likely mm. bring up. He will indeed, <laughs> in which he played mm. Admiral Ozzel in The Empire Strikes Back. He is the guy from the uh, from the Empire who brings the fleet out of uh out, out of hyperspace too close to uh, to, the, yes. uh, to, to Hoth, thus yeah. alerting the rebels to their presence and he yeah. gets force choked to over distance by Darth Vader, the first person that we can see who force choke from distance. Cool. Amazing. Yes. Right. Anyway, sorry I've got that out of, out of system there. Yeah. Right. Ooh. She had also made appearances <laughs> of course in Doctor Who again, the Ark, Mind of Evil, Pyramids of Mars, which is one I've heard of, The Invisible Enemy. Castrovalva, yes. I've heard of that oh one. My that was God. a um... Castrovalva is Peter Davison's first story. Ah, okay, cool. Where he's in the zero and... room. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> Remembrance of the Daleks. Yeah, that's Sylvester McCoy. Yeah, boy, that's uh... hey, okay. We also see um, Lilius. Is that right, Ross? Yeah. Lilius Walker. Apparently so. Yeah, as jo- as Joan Eastgate, her obligatory Doctor Who appearance being Terror of the Zygons. Oh, and... very good. And she was married to Peter Vaughan, who starred in no Morning way. to the Curious. Morning to the Curious and morning. Porridge. Yeah. Yes. Then we're almost there, people. Stay with us. Stay with us. This this will get the, Page the, the, nine the description. Of the script. Yeah. The the description of who's in this show will be longer than our description of the actual show. There's a lot well, of people no... in there's a lot of people in this episode, isn't there? Yes. But there's the almost episodes. no story, so <laughs> <Right>. it's <laughs> Right, so Patricia Haynes appears as Sheila Boy, uh, Pusses Galoria in Up Pompeii, exclamation mark, and, and, <laughs> and appeared in a plethora of other shows, including The Avengers, Champions, and the final episode of The Saint. She also oh. starred in Virgin Witch with first-time <laughs> actor Vicky Michelle of a low low yes. fame, and a touchstone for this podcast and our lives. Yeah. yeah. What, Guys, one do you of... want to explain why? Well, Vicky, Vicky Michelle, Michelle thinks she's just... Just hot. <laughs> yeah. No, no, well, no, no. Yes, no. but I mean, yeah, one, one of the um, con- contributors to this podcast um, once hired that film from the um, uh, video shop at the top of Richmond Road in Cardiff. Virgin Witch? Yes. Yeah, well, it wasn't me, so it must have been you. And? Yes. <laughs> was, 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 am I wrong in thinking that, John, when you worked in now sadly defunct uh, multimedia <laughs> empor- emporium MVC in Cardiff, was there not a man who would come in demanding everything that featured v- Vicky Michelle? Or have I, dreamt that? <laughs> I think you might have you dreamt might, that. Wow. You might, you might have dreamt it. I mean... I did, I did have to um, fix uh, one of my boss's computers um, <laughs> ah, at, this w- might at be work. It. And like, I looked at his internet browsing history and it was uh, Vicky Michelle nude, which is like... <laughs> nearly, <laughs> nearly every day on his... Um... <laughs> which boss was this? <laughs> no way, amazing. Right, do, do, um, you, do you reckon he was just like hoping that like, some more may have been released yeah, overnight? Never, it was early days <laughs> yeah. of the internet, wasn't it? It was so just filling yeah. up as much, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> what was the, I was thinking the other day, driving to Cornwall on holiday, what was the website, Cleves, you used to look at where it was photos of like dead bodies? Oh, and, yeah, no, um, I don't know. <laughs> it was a, there was one photo, you used to look at it in college, and there was one photo of a man who'd like had a car crash in his brain. <laughs> had come out of his head and whizzed down a road. (laughs) 
D- John, I think this was rotten.com. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. And there was another one that you made me look at where there was a dead body up on a telegraph pole that had been in a car crash. I got no memory of this. What's all I can remember <laughs> looking, <laughs> looking at it on the internet on at college was Transformers. No, <laughs> you spent you, you would at, spend hours looking at oh look at this one. His brains come out. Are you sure that wasn't Kieran? Not me. No, it was you. You <laughs> you were the only one. You would you were the only person that you would allow to use the computer cleave. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow did okay. you have to put money in my lunchbox yeah. which, which I had it cleaned out yeah, yeah. with your like um, with your noodles oh right. god no, it's yeah. okay we're almost there and finally oh sorry I missed that it said sadly um, Patricia Haynes sadly this was her final screen role as she passed oh, away really? from lung cancer at the age of 45 only oh, a year no. later and you also oh, missed god. out that she was married to Michael Caine with whom she had a daughter Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. I missed that bit. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. And finally, of course, one of our most featured actors. And again, touchstones for the whole Isn't podcast, it amazing? <laughs> the late, great Clive Swift, or as the Apple Podcasts AI transcript generator calls him, Kloof Swift, <laughs> <laughs> which sounds a very Star Wars name. Was okay. Yeah. Yeah. He must have been the richest actor in Britain from about <laughs> 1971 to about 1976 because he did loads of stuff, didn't well, he? Well, yeah, I said something here. Like, um, there's a guy called Andrew Screens who's wrote mm. a book called um, The Book of Beasts, which um, yes. we got. I got a copy of, which is very good. highly recommend okay. that. But he's okay. also got a blog called The Blog of Beasts. And there's an... an a, I'm getting here an exhaustive biology... A, a body, an exhaustive but biography. The exhaustive biology of, 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 of Clue Swift. Clive Swift. <laughs> <laughs> an exhaustive biography. It is. Really blues. He's gone into a huge amount of detail, and it's really interesting. But um, okay. yeah, he's d- he's done so much. Like you said, but they can't have been paid that much in those days. The boys, like you said, he would be like like um, sort of Elon Musk sort of level rich. I think they? relative to other people, you know, if a bin man was on two and six a week or something. Mm. You would have been on about three pounds a job or something, wouldn't you? You could have probably bought a new car within like six months or something. I yeah. think. I think he was loaded because he did quite a lot of horror stuff. Yeah, he did. He did the other thing that we should watch for this, which is um, a din- it's a, it, where the people dead of are mine? in a yeah in a dinner party, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, which is good, but um. This isn't so good, is it? No, I no, think we. No. we <laughs> I think we can say. Can I just read out where on YouTube where I watched mm. this? I've got it on DVD, but I couldn't find the DVD before people start complaining. Um, the one comment it's got on YouTube is this, and it, and it's pertinent to you two. Mm. And it seems to come from nowhere, so it's very strange. AFC Bournemouth could have used some of his anger and emotion <laughs> at, at Dean Court last night. <laughs> watching this, <laughs> watching this has helped a slight recovery. A recovery after another humiliating home defeat by those supposed big time Charlies from twenty five miles northeast, <laughs> and that was one year ago. <laughs> So who who were Bournemouth play, playing? Twenty five from miles north east. <laughs> north east. Is that Southampton? Oh, uh, maybe. Would they have been playing Southampton like a year ago, James? No, no, no. I was about to say this must be a long time ago, John, because uh, it's been the Vita- it's, it's not been Dean Court. They've for ages. They it, well, it is Dean Court, but it's now known yes. as the Vitality Stadium. The Vitality Stadium. Well, this says a year ago, so I presume it's someone who still calls it Dean Court. Like oh. I would say that um, Coventry. St- still play at um, yes. Highfield Road or like, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. that kind of thing, isn't it? Where the Ar- Arsenal still play at um, Highbury. Highbury. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely>. yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah, what's the, what do you think on that, guys? Do, do you have any idea what oh, kind of insight God. that brings to no. this episode of Beasts? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, oh, dearie me. Well, I think many ways. That football is like an unknown land for me, John. You just... No, I know. But why would you... I mean, that comment is literally screaming into nothingness, isn't it? <laughs> it yeah. is. But you made it feel on... a little bit better, though, didn't it? <laughs> You've gone onto YouTube to complain about a football result on a 45-year-old... <laughs> 
It's very niche. <laughs> Chuck he was like having a rage. He was just like smashing up his so flat. Yeah. Like, and he accidentally knocked over his laptop and it started playing Beast yeah. by mistake. And it, just, <laughs> and it did the reverse of the actual Beast where it calmed him yeah. down. Soothed him. Yeah. Yeah. It soothed him. It soothed the Savage Beast. Oh yeah. my God, it's possible. So it's whoever possible. was playing for Bournemouth last night, la- that night, they could have done with strangling someone in their white fronts and vest. <laughs> rather than scoring a goal. Wow. Oh my God. Right, yes. So, um... Oh, I've got right, no notes, okay. by the way, because there's no story. Okay. We're, we're virtually there now, but what it, the final thing it says is that apparently this, uh, the Book of Beasts, um, Clive Swift... Ross has put, it includes that there are two gems from his career that we weren't aware of. First of all, he was in Hazel, the detective series starred Nicholas Ball as the title character and was weirdly created, of course, by Terry Venables. Yes, I knew that. Oh, co-created by Terry Venables. Um, Swift pops up in the second season. And this I have no memory of. And it's The Old Guys, a BBC sitcom headlined by Swift and Roger Lloyd Pack as two retired gentlemen oh. sharing a house and competing for the affections of their attractive neighbour, Jane Asher. Oh. <laughs> and when did that come out? So that was like it's 2010 or something like that. It's just, oh, yeah. there's, so much te- there's so much television, which was just like... When <laughs> we I had was, busy lives. When we had busy lives, and you think like, what? Like you find out like these things which are on, you feel like... And this was on for like two or three years, and like, it completely wow. passed me by. When Yeah. yeah. When you wow. grow up, I think... People like us are aware of literally every single television program. Yes. And now I have no idea. When they announced who was headlining Glastonbury, someone called Scissor. <laughs> I have no idea who or what a Scissor is. Oh. Well, um, and then I found out that it's. Then I found out it's not even spelt Scissor. It's spelt S Z A. And I was like, "What is this?" <laughs> What is this madness? Who is oh, Scissor? Go and watch an episode of Beast of Calm Yourself, Dame, down, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, right. So, finally, we're getting into it. And what I think it's fair to say is this is not Nigel Neal's strongest work. I, was, no. I remembered, Ross, as I was watching it, that that guy or that publishing company had very kindly sent you a copy of that guy's book. Yes. And I thought, Jesus Christ, imagine dedicating yourself to this yeah yeah it's really i was yeah. just like wow there's some interesting articles because, about this over there um they, they were just saying how it was very much sort of uh based on neil's experience of working with hammer and what it was like yes. to work on the, on the set for hammer with the tea lady yeah, yeah, and, sure. and all that kind of stuff well they said there's, there's two interesting ideas that get thrown in and you just think this could have been developed into something far more interesting as opposed to that it feels a bit more kind of like a sketch more than yeah. anything else not yeah. number one is that the journalist um, introduces that whole idea of, you know, in African cultures, when put, someone puts on a mask, they believe that the mask is real mm. and that the mask mm. is, you know, the person has gone away and that the mask is, I was like, okay, well, that's the one interesting idea here. And the other idea is when they're trying to hype him up in order to like get back into the suit, but they get him drunk again. Mm. And then they're like, just like sort of to go into your instincts and mm. like sort of tap into your subconscious. Yes. That's that's how, and I was like so there's obviously some sort of Jungian Freudian subconscious thing going on there. I was like, okay, well that's interesting, but those are sort of like the two ideas that they're just well, yeah, they were just saying saying this was like his reaction to kind of method acting as well. It was like trying to sort of like like, you know, sort of like reaction to that becoming a a big thing uh, at Mm -hmm. at that time as well. But we should maybe just explain what the story is. Yes, yes, absolutely, yeah. Okay, well, well, you could write short, it down on the back of a fag packet, the story, yes. basically. In, in short, <laughs> we join a, a sort of very Hammer-esque horror film series in production featuring a man in a very, very, another reference to Doctor Who here, a very kind of Doctor Who 70s style monster. Oh, I would say, yeah. So I've, I would say it does start off, it looks very Hammer, and it looks great yes. until that monster turns up. And I think that it, I watched this twice. The first time I was in the same reaction, like, this is shit. Uh, what mm. an awful waste of! Uh, yeah. And this was—I think this was the third one they filmed, but the, the last one they showed in, in most oh, areas, okay. right? Yeah. Um, and I've, but when you when I watched it the second time, actually, I found that the story was was much better. It's just that, but that the costume is so bad, it yeah. just it it but, overshadows everything. The first time you watch it, thinking, yeah, that, that mm. even they wouldn't even have something like that on Doctor Who. It looks it no. looks so. Well. It looks, it's a bit lost in spacey and it just yes. kind of, 
And the fact that it's called dummy, you're like, yes, why is it weird. called dummy? It's weird. just stupid. And it's it's done in a way that I think each each of the characters in it are the kind of archetypes. So they're very flat characters. Mm. They're all very kind of um, uh, cliched. Mm. And so it's a bit of a, it's just a bit of a run through of, I think that's. So it's this giant really sort of like it. crocodile kind of. Yes. Like tree type monster comes in. It's just hopeless. Yes. And it goes wrong and they cool cut and then you see that they're on a set filming a film. Yes. Um, and the act, and it, this is, um, so I've also, I think it's uh, maybe talking about things like um, the Dracula series uh, yeah. where the, they kept bringing back. Um, Big Chris Lee to reprise yes. his role, he, and he didn't want to do it anymore. But yeah. you know, uh, but this, uh, I think they were sort of implying there's been quite a big gap since the last dummy film. But they managed to bring everyone together again and uh, to sort of do a, a new one. Yeah. Um, well, and also, but did, did you note why and you know wh- wh- where that kind of where the interest was coming the from? The Japanese, yeah. yes, <laughs> yet again, Nigel Neal and his obsession with the Japs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like in Stone Tape. Yeah. Exactly that. That's you got to keep out. You got to keep an eye out for him, James. <laughs> that's true. That's that's true. So yes, we we're all they want him. is is a device that can record classical music made out of stone or something. No, it's or Va- Wagner's ball, ring Wagner on cycle ball on a ball bearing. Yeah, S- same difference. <laughs> and then all and then all they want is a new dummy film, and they're happy. That's it. They'd be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I think as soon as you're into this, you realise that it's quite very. It's very lazy and it's very sketched out. Yes. And it's it's like, I've got five episodes and then I need a sixth one and I'll, oh, I'll just do this one because it's like, it's it's what I know as yeah. Nigel Neal is probably thinking. And I just think that, um, yeah, the, the story goes nowhere. And you know exactly where the story is going yes. as well from the mid, because they, they signpost the, the, the issues with, um, Bernard Horsfall's character right from the start when they're saying you've got to be careful of the hands I built those hands yes. and they've got like springs in them and blah blah and it's like oh he's he's obviously going to strangle someone yeah, and why would they build them with spring loaded crushing well, exactly. hands on them I, yeah. I, I, exactly. I put, the, I put down that it's, it's, che- it's Chekhov's claw yeah <laughs> said Chekhov's gun <laughs> Chekhov, yeah. oh well, careful with those go oh you well, can kill a man talk about, talking about like crushing um, hands I was watching an episode of um uh, Robot Wars last night. On, nice because um, uh, of course, because Gladiators wasn't on because of the fucking football. Yeah. Um, so I had to <laughs> I had to find my um, uh, sort of reality TV um, um, arena battle um, TV fix elsewhere. Well, why aren't you watching um, Celebrity Big Brother Cleves like you used to do? Am I- so where did this come from that I was a big big brother fan? Because I remember coming down to see you in Cardiff and yes. like like getting early. Uh, do you remember like the old Nokia flip phone? Yeah, that one yeah. That would go on WAP. Yeah, yeah. With you know, WAP now means something else, I believe. <laughs> um, you know, I'd have to. Uh, I can't, well, I'll steer the conversation away from that. But um, <laughs> WAP phones and us all being out, and you going, oh, we can get the updates on the phone. Oh, so and so's been evicted from the house. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. It's yeah. Big Brother Two. I think I, I lost interest after that. After really, I of... thought it went on for a lot, a lot longer. No. Than My that, mum please. still like watches it and like she said like go to sleep with like the live feed oh, oh my god <laughs> the sound of the tweeting birds oh, shit. between we, that we, and going on the box and make paying 50p to watch <laughs> robbie williams <laughs> we're watching we're watching it and we're enjoying it lots actually it's quite funny uh, um louis walsh is just raving mad oh and um he's brilliant that, on it uh, without yes. him it would be very boring but i think he's very good value um i think really what, we have real struggle with with the term celebrities now because i just don't know any anyone well no no 90 uh, percent of the people in there are not celebrities they're just people from other mm. reality tv shows mm. um yes yeah, so anyway, back to this very boring episode. Probably the worst thing that Nigel Neal ever put his name to, let's face it. So they have uh, a, uh, uh, like John uh, James said, a journalist has come to interview people on the set. Um, we have the guy who's inside the dummy suit is having a bit of some kind of breakdown because they've um, inexplicably um, hired an actor who's run off of his wife. Um, yes, who is, who's, and child. Yeah, and child, and who is... Uh, uh, laughing at him from the sidelines, um, yes. uh, which is sends him into like um, some really bad um, 
crying acting, like in his pants and yes. in the dressing room. He's and he's covered and pro- in like baby oil or something for some reason, yeah. isn't he? In his specially Making made dressing sweaty. room with an enormous door. Did you see yeah, that? Yeah, which I yeah. thought was very interesting, actually. In order to- Ross, do you know what it made me, what it what it immediately made me think of when, you, it, when they saw him? Wasn't me crying in my pants or something? No, in my life. no, 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 no. <laughs> when they when, when in he went into <laughs> when he went into his special room, yeah, um, to and then have the, the kit taken off of him, yeah, it just immediately made me think of when you and I had to dress up at Toys in, in Toys R Us, yeah, as I'm Jeffrey and Bruin Jeffrey the bear. and Bru- <laughs> Bruin the bear, respectively. Well, and we were just sweaty, absolutely, and it was horrendous, but no stings. I thought it'd be a really good, horrendous. like, sky of the day of being in no, the characters when we worked towards us. So I had to get there early and then went into, mm. like, the loading bay, and there was yes. just two enormous black boxes, almost like, yes. uh, like sarcophagi, with, like, yes. on there, so it says Jeffrey Six. Also, it's like the, the, the Six Jeffrey costume, which is got on rotation around all the different toys dresses. Yes, and it's a robot it on, version of <laughs> Jeffrey. Yeah. Jeffrey Six initiate Jeffrey Six. <laughs> yeah, that's Jeffrey Six. Sounds like um, some sort of a Star Trek episode. Wasn't what was that guy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but we got six minutes left. Oh, wait, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> just to say, Jeffrey was very wet from the people who've been sweating in it. Oh, it, it, it was so unpleasant. Oh, no. John, the oh. sweat was disgusting, and My- you could not. You, you had the entire time having prepubescent kids running up and just kicking you. Yeah. And you couldn't do anything. My friend you, you Richard was also bowler bear in the bowling alley in um, <laughs> Leamington Spa. Oh, so that's a lot of my friends who have spent yeah. time as um inside. What suits. would you call those? Yeah, mascots. animal mascots. Animal yeah. mascots, yes, yes. Okay. Terrifying. Anyway, all right, so so we'll move on from that. But that's what it made me think of. Um and so yes, uh what then happens is that they say uh they go, Well, look, you know, can't you they say to the guy, um, uh, Peter Peter uh, Wagner, who is mm. the man who's run off with the one bloke's wife, they say to him, "Look, we'll just pay you off. We'll, we'll we'll pay you off, and you can just you know we'll pay you to be in the film, and we'll hire someone else." And he's like, "No, I want the part." And it's absolutely really annoying, isn't it? Yes, he is a <laughs> dick. Uh, he's resolute that he won't leave. Um, there's some good so comedy just- though, where Clive Swift uh, talks about maybe getting rid of the guys with the dummy suit. And the director said he won't do it. And then later yeah. on, yes. when he confronts the actor who's trying to sack, who suggests the same thing, he he um, plays the moral high ground and said, no, I would never even consider doing yes. that. So I don't know if you call it good comedy. Oh. It, it, it's a very kind of um, A to B writing where you, I think it's just really all really obvious and really kind of just, it's, yeah. the characters have no kind of, impetus to do anything at all really mm. i think that you expect something to happen with the um the journalist coming in because you think that she that she is going to be our eyes morally yes. into the world of the corrupt filmmaking industry mm. but then she kind of is forgotten by she's, about she's just there to sort she? of like say you know sort of monologue some of the other sort of theories yes. about masks yes. and stuff isn't so it? No, and raise an really. eyebrow to things and stuff and then I she thought, kind of disappears then yes to what apart from she gets the last line i also thought that as i was watching it, i thought was oh, it going to turn out that like she's not really a fi- she's not really a film journalist that there was going to be something else and i thought that, that it would have been really really good or better if it would there would have been like uh, an inspector calls style vibes yes that like she leaves and then they get a phone call and they go oh it's somebody from that film magazine yeah they yeah, say yeah, yeah journalists yeah. on the way yeah dun, dun, dun. Mm-hmm. you yeah. know so you know, she was some sort of provocateur figure that yeah. brings out the truth all this but no <laughs> that wasn't no, no she, she james that's journalist. already a better idea it is just so disappointing and i think that the, for me it just goes through the numbers Mm. And um, nothing happens. You can see straight away what what is going to happen. Where Clive Clive Swift winds him up, gives him a drink, he yes. puts the suit on, and then he goes mental and he goes to strangles a man dressed as Dick Turpin. <laughs> yes, and then it's end of part one, and then part two is just well, a vaguely kind of carry on feeling, mm. uh, breaking the almost breaking the fourth wall kind of thing where. You just see the the only funny thing actually is Thorley Walters, who is the Hammer actor yes. that they've roped in. He keeps coming up, popping up dressed as a 
like priest or something, doesn't he? Yes. And he's quite funny, but the rest of it is. Funny. I like. He's, quite, he's, he's like keep insisting on if they don't do my um, my part to, my line today, I, I, I'm going to leave. And then yes. they, they says a man's been killed. He goes, "Oh, that's unlucky." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like he's the best part. I think he steals it, but otherwise, mm. it's um. So uh, we yes. have Mr. Bronson turn up as a policeman who thinks it's yes. a, a wild animal, and that which made me think a yes. bit of um, American Wolf from London. Yeah. Um, yes. And they sort of they. They sort of try to go and uh, proclaim him, but he just he, with a he, tether. Yeah, he takes like like a, a really weak looking tether in with him. Yeah, and what I've put is that that tether is going to be powerless against a pissed up thesp. And there's another is, copper there with very long hair. The, his hair yeah. is touching his collar, which I don't think is a, is a. He's not a real policeman, is he? Let's face it. No. <laughs> and when it. It keeps cutting back to shots of the thespian inside the dubby outfit running amok. Yeah. And what I put is like, this is like a 1970s Mr. Blobby. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> really similar vibe. He's just going, oh, just smashing stuff. But he's doing that <laughs> really weird noise, isn't he? Yes. Sort of... <laughs> yeah. Again, another thing which completely undermines the whole, the, the aspect of the film. It's just an awful But he's not effect. really, if at this point he'd got no. seemingly suddenly more strength or more aggression or he'd taken on more of the monster's attributes from the film, mm-hmm. it would have been more interesting. Yeah, but what maybe he's slightly doing, slightly supernatural. Yep, yeah, 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 yeah. What he's actually doing is just pushing over, like, papier-mâché walls <laughs> and stuff. And, and smashing and up point, some of, um, sugar glass, push, stained glass windows. Well, yeah, and P- then he pushing really over angrily... Huge tea urn. Yeah. Well, yeah, he pushes the tea trolley really aggressively. <laughs> and it's... I feel like that some days. <laughs> It's the, there's no um... especially if um, Bournemouth do badly. <laughs> but in the um, in, no the, in the of... Beast books, I talk they they talk about um, things like uh, Jason and um, Michael Myers and stuff. The Argonauts. Yeah. <laughs> and I think if they had if the monster looked better, if it looked if it was someone who looked like Michael Myers or something, I think it could be a much more creepy sort of yes. Realistic. Uh, it was. Bit, I think it could be much more effective if it was, if it was a monster like that, not this massive. Mm. You know, something like croc out of a pink windmill or something. It just looks shit. It looks really mm. shit. And it doesn't look scary or um, menacing at all. Um, then what happens? Do they get his wife in then to try and talk to him? Yeah. Yes. And they stick a, a, a speaker in and, and sort of trick him yeah. by um, recording, uh, sort of getting her to sort of like talk to him on the on the microphone whilst uh, Mr. Bronson yes. goes in to try and recover the dead body. But then he... <laughs> Yeah, Everyone that goes wrong. Yeah. And why would why would you go in to recover a dead body at the point where this madman is on the loose? You'd, yeah. Surely you'd try and capture the madman first. Man first. Um, but the speaker yes. gets stamped on then, doesn't it? The boss yeah. wood yes. speaker. Um, and then does she... Well, that's when um, find... the boyfriend goes to get his gun out of his car and goes yes, to Yes, and she yes. finds yeah. her way in, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. She oh, yeah. finds her mm-hmm. way in. Way in. Yes, she falls over and gets covered and in fake around blood. Fake Un- blood yeah. Yeah. Necessarily. Unless yeah. she just falls nowhere near the fake blood and then goes, oh! Well, yeah, it's, it's like very carry-on. It's like... Then, yeah, the guy, the boyfriend who looks a bit like um, William Shatner, I thought, um, <laughs> goes and gets the shotgun um, he k- sneaks in round the back, shoots the dummy costume from behind. But, uh, from behind, but I think you're meant to think that it's just the dummy actor sat down, yeah. taking yes. five minutes uh, <laughs> from you know after he's ex- 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 kind of excelled himself in pushing a tea trolley. Um, <laughs> but then obviously he's not there, and then <clears throat> Bernard Horsfall jumps out of nowhere in his. Why fronts in his vest? <laughs> I think because that thing is, it's supposed to be like a shock. Like you're supposed yes. to think, oh my god, okay, he's killed him, and then suddenly, yeah. ah! So that it's not quite a jump scare, but the jump scare is utterly undermined by the fact it's just a man in a really 1970s vest and pair of Y fronts. Yes, yes, and there's no shock at all because you know that that's going to happen. But he yes. gets overpowered um, by Mr. Bronson, and then he's seen sort of like tight sort of. Sc- Trussed up. Gaffer taped <laughs> together. <laughs> yes. Hopping out. Yes. Ow. I think what... The, what I think this, this whole thing really... would have worked better as like a Noel Edmonds um, gotcha <laughs> Oscar sort of <laughs> set up, wouldn't it? DLT yeah. as the monster. I think that it, it suffers from several things. It, it's rather than edited together, I think it's vision mixed, a bit like um, 
stone tape was. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it's done with, it's like a multicam setup, like rather than a single camera setup. So the edits and stuff aren't quite as crisp as you want them. It's just a man mm. literally pushing a button between camera one, two or three, which makes it a bit shoddy. But also the sound, there's no sound effects. So the bits when he's like smashing up the, the, um, set and stuff there's very bad sound effects there's no like foley mm. work or whatever you call it and it's just him heavy breathing as the monster which just it sounds totally stupid and there's no music at all is there any music to no, speak i don't of? think so no 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 so it, it, anything you would add to kind of increase a sense of um uh, tension yeah, is, I, is missing, but I think it's. I don't think we should be blaming it. No, you know, I think it's, it all comes down to the production of it and the direction. Well, and... he must have been involved in that part. Yeah, he know. must have signed off the creation of the monster. Surely, I think. I must... think you could take that same script and redo it, and it could be really good. Oh yeah, it could be really good. But I think if the monster looked scary and had more of a sense of, oh my god, he's taking on some of the abilities and powers and the characteristics. of characteristics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's more scary than just like the reveal of a man in his wife fronts jumping out <laughs> on someone. And what is the, the journalist's last line, James? Did you make a note of um, what it was? or Because to be honest, I didn't. He was a dummy. Is it, 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 it was oh, it was saying yeah. the title of the thing. I don't know. It, yeah, he well, he was the dummy. Yeah. But, um, I've just written in capital letters, attacked by man in vest and wife fronts. Mm-hmm. That was my last note. <laughs> Disappointed, John. So this is well, that, the first time you you didn't enjoy Nigel Neal on, on, on Very the much so. I oh, think that last perfect. line, all of the way it's set up and all of the reveals are just like, it doesn't make any sense. Why would a monster in a horror film series be called The Dummy? Mm-hmm. Is it some kind of pun on mummy or, you know, the monster itself is really... Shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't think, way when you look at how he describes it in the script, I don't think they had much because it, it was he sort of it's gotta be like half animal, half half plant, half all this kind of, and it's I think, you know, it was just it was almost unfilmable what he, how he described Too it. Too ambitious. Yeah. Yeah. And it just there's no kind of and then when you see it in the scenes where you see him running amok, it's just a tall man in a very badly fitting uh, baggy costume, mm. which has no sense of peril or threat at all to you as the viewer. And at that point, because the, because they kind of do away with the journalist in episode two, in episode one, you're kind of watching it through her eyes as she's meeting different characters. Mm. She meets the, the kind of greasy, oily PR man, Mm. He's very two-dimensional. She meets Clive Swift. He's very two-dimensional. She meets the director. He's very two-dimensional. Then when we move into episode two, you don't see it through her eyes anymore. Mm. And it just looks silly by then. Um, I just just made me think, is there any performance of Clive Swift you've ever seen where he doesn't get a handkerchief out and mop his brow? (laughs) It's trademark. Mm. It's trademark. He's brilliant. He is brilliant. I love him in everything he's in. But this is... I don't think he's very good, at, but I don't think he's given much to do in this because mm. maybe there's the re- too many characters. If you compare it to a lot yes. of the other stuff, like they they normally have like four, four or five characters. Max, yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas there's shoot, uh, too many on here, and so then they all have to. They're all quite um, low level, aren't they? You don't get to go into them much, much, into too much yeah, detail. Yeah, the pay the payoff of this would be that he gets some kind of comeuppance for basically talking this guy into committing two murders. Does he kill two people? Just the one, one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And then he, he basically, all you see is him just sat there looking a bit bemused at the end, mm-hmm. isn't he really? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, as an Nigel Neal thing, it's very, very disappointing indeed. And I think it's worse sin is that it's boring. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just found myself fast forward in it. Like that bloody nonsense with the action man and um, Hellraiser. Mm-hmm. It was on that level of boring for me. Okay, well, what score are you going to give it then? What did I give um, that thing with Action Man? Ex- extra. Extra. That was minus. That was a minus something. It's very minus, wasn't it? Minus nine. <sighs> I'd say for Thorley Walters alone, this is minus seven. Okay, okay minus seven for John- James. Yeah. What are you going to give it? A one. A one for James? Yep. Mm. I'm giving it a two. 
I Ooh, think. Really I, clear. Yeah, I think second time I watched I'm it, surprised. it was much better. Um, but again, I watched it double speed, so it wasn't quite so boring. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who wrote that book is going to be livid with me. No, 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 because yeah. the next one we might enjoy, which is um, during, during Barty's Party, which is the rat one. We're yeah. not going to enjoy it. It's very boring and slow as well. Oh, okay. it's, 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 like sta- it's like a stage play oh, okay. based, yes. based I, on, I the, on James Herbert's watch- The Rats. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't wait to watch these when I bought the DVD in about mm. 2009. And the only one that's memorable at all is Baby, which we've already done. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, and then you've got the other one with Pauline Quirk going, Billy, <laughs> you've got something to do with a dolphin. Yeah, so that's the one I want to watch. <sighs> Anyway, oh, but tune in to the next next episode, guys. <laughs> because I'll just I'm, keep I'm, listening. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So until next time. Um, <laughs> or just or don't, don't don't go anywhere. We'll be a bit older. Yeah, we'll be yeah. we'll be back soon we'll for the second part of this episode where we'll be, we're doing during Barty's party. But um, yeah, happy day. Love, light, and peace. You have been listening to the General Witch Finders. <laughs>Ross from the General Witchfinders. Did you know that I also do another podcast with my friend David? Hello. Well, I had phones before that. You're not taking this seriously, Ross. David and I do our own supernatural research and investigations in our home county of Dorset. So, if you think that's up your street, why don't you give it a listen? It's Dark Darset, D-A-R-Z-E-T. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts. It's not now. Well, I just I said happy birthday to James already, but happy birthday month to you as well, John. Oh, thanks, Cleves. Yeah, yeah, forty six. Um, Unbelievable and weird, isn't it, to feel forty six years it's and the last about twenty six, twenty seven have all felt like about five minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> but I got to say, though, last last February was the longest month of my life. I don't know why it felt so long. Oh, it was really? Awful. What the month that just went? Yeah. And, but now, mm. now March is just like zooming ahead. So is it, is it to, do, to do with your flooring nightmare though? Ross? Yeah, it was just my yeah, just my life was. I yeah, it went a bit horrible for a bit. But it's horrible. okay now. We've got nice warm underfloor heating now. Your daughter's Lovely. not still full of pus, clean. No, she's not. My daughter's not full of pus either. That that makes life a lot easier. Excellent, <laughs> good. good. Yeah, <laughs> pus filled baby. <laughs> That's a lot of pus, isn't it? Yeah. She's taller than me, so... It's lovely. insane, isn't it? <laughs> and, and just walking around like a scared ghost the whole time. Like, mm-hmm. uh, and since mm-hmm. our last episode, I've seen you both in uh, reality as well. Yeah. Yes. Not the same which time. Is good. But- Not at the same time. Two separate meals and two separate nights, which, which left me with the IBS from hell. For yeah. about a week. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we didn't tell James <laughs> no, about, the first, about our initial venue where we were going to eat. Uh, I don't know if we have told James. No, no, no. Did no, I, no. I? Have you heard about this, James, with where we went to meet Cleves um, in a... What is it called, Cleves? Oh, uh, I don't know. It's, it's the restaurant attached to a... Some kind um, of slot table. barn. Table. It's table, table, it's called. It's not yes. Hungry yeah, Horse. Yeah, yeah. It was table, like... Table, um, yeah. Yeah. It's not called Table Table. It is. It so, is. Yeah. What? Or oh, something like that. Anyways, it's, it's yeah. one connected to the Premier Inn. <laughs> Rin, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it uh, and basically, it, there was about 
40 kids in there going absolutely <laughs> mental. We were like, in, like a scene from <laughs> like a scene from the kids from Fame but oh my with God. really horrible, smelly, snotty children yeah. going oh, mad. We were in the party stuff. room uh, amongst oh all the gosh. little balloons just are bashing us in the face the whole time. And all <laughs> oh, time. my God. <laughs> People so, just staring at us and saying, yeah, what are you going to do about it? And it was, you, uh, can't, you can't say Chappie Cleave. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, so we had to go somewhere else because we, we, they wouldn't even move. One woman, one woman wouldn't move her chair so I could sit down properly. Mm. Uh, it was that geez. kind of face off with. Oh um, man, yeah. So John was go. rubbing his head in. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> trying not to just go mental and stand up, sort of screaming at people. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, well, it was a bit of precursor to tonight's episode, wasn't it? <laughs> I could have been the dummy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I'd gone mad. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I could have protected. attacked a man in my wife fronts and vest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. the most startling bit. Okay, <laughs> let's do the script. The right, okay. John's got yeah. an early morning. Let's go. Okay, yeah, the, yeah, script, yeah, the script. The yeah. script is about ten pages long. Everyone, so is, get oh, comfy. I'll pop your cushions. What is this? What is this madness? <laughs> <laughs> 